The HSG or hysterosalpingogram is a common fertility test. I often recommend it to my patients when I want to know about anatomy. I want to know that the fallopian tubes are open and I want to know that the inside of the uterine cavity is perfect for an embryo to implant. So in this video, we're going to go over the five most common questions my patients ask me about the HSG. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist helping people build families for almost 20 years, answering questions and doing this test, the HSG for almost 20 years. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you get my weekly videos about fertility and reproductive health. I love educating. You can find a lot of resources on my website, drlaurashaheen.com. I have content on Instagram, TikTok. You have links to my books on fertility and miscarriage and my weekly podcast, Baby or Bust where I love interviewing people and doing deep discussions and deep dives into fertility topics. In this video, we're going to go over the five most common questions I get about a very common fertility test, the HSG or hysterosalpingogram. Now let's do a little review of exactly what it is. So... <laughs> This is Jeannie. A hysterosalpingogram is a test in which place a speculum in the vagina so we can see the bottom of the uterus, which is the cervix. We put a little tiny catheter into the cervix and that allows fluid to go through the cervix into the uterine cavity and spill out through the fallopian tubes. This is really the only way that we can make sure that the fallopian tubes are open. We can't see fallopian tubes on a regular pelvic ultrasound, and even if we could see them, we couldn't tell that they are open. You have to actually watch the fluid go through the tubes to make sure. The only other way to be sure is actually doing a surgery, like a laparoscopy, where we put a camera in the belly button and then watch fluid go through the tubes kind of from above the uterus and the outside of the tubes. But that is invasive. And so really the HSG is best. There are other options for uterine cavity evaluations um, than the HSG. You can just look inside the uterus with something called a hysteroscopy. And you can also do something called a saline infusion sonogram where salt water is placed into the uterine cavity and an ultrasound is used to make sure that the uterus is perfect on the inside. For uterine cavity, issues. We're looking for filling defects or scarring, something like polyps or fibroids or adhesions that could impact the ability of the embryo to implant. We're also looking for uterine septums. That's something that you can be born with or uterine anomalies. So this test is really valuable for a lot of different reasons. You know, people get nervous about this test and they often ask me a lot of questions. So in this video, we're going to go through the top five questions. Question number one, do I have to do the HSG? <laughs> No. Um, people are often nervous about the HSG because they're nervous it's going to be uncomfortable, maybe hurt. People talk about that a lot online. We'll talk about that in a second. And people are just nervous. It seems invasive. And that's okay. You should definitely ask questions. And there really should be a good indication for doing it. I think if anybody is not getting pregnant, it's really important to figure out all of the things that could be potentially going on. And so I do talk to patients about it. Sometimes people want to try some low-tech things first and maybe do the HSG later. But I really don't want to forget about it. Um, there's one person in my practice I will never forget. She had been doing low-tech treatment with her primary care provider for over a year, you know, like Clomid and Letrozole and trying at home. And when she came to see me, we did the HSG and we found out that her fallopian tubes were blocked. So for her, she was so frustrated. That was a wasted year where she was not a parent and we figured it out and she did become a mom. But I just, I don't want to miss that, but talk to your provider about pros and cons for your personal situation. Question number two, does the HSG make me more fertile. What? This is actually true. There's been lots and lots of studies on this and my patients do ask me. We don't really know why, but the theory is just the flushing of the fallopian tubes. If there's any mucus plugs or kind of anything like that, that people are more fertile about three or four months after the HSG. You can actually try to conceive in the same cycle that you do the HSG as long as it's done before ovulation. And there are Again, there are studies that show this. So a great study to look at this is from the Cochrane database. They collected information from 13 randomized controlled trials and showed that in couples that were infertile, that after the HSG, they were about double the chances of getting pregnant. So before they had the HSG, collectively, couples had about a 19% chance of getting pregnant each month. And then after the HSG, anywhere from 30 to 50% of the time they got pregnant. And this benefit lasted for about three months after the test. So 
I don't use an HSG as a treatment for my patients, but I often will let them know this information if they're nervous about getting the test done. I think it gives us great information about anatomy. And if there's a benefit of them being more fertile for about three months after the test, I, I think that's just a positive. Question number three, how long does the HSG take? It takes about five minutes. So of course you have to come to the clinic and park and get ready, change into a gown and then go into a room. It's done with some special equipment. You're lying down, you're, the speculum is placed, the tube is placed in the catheter and it takes just a few seconds or a minute to kind of watch the fluid go through the tube. So honestly, it takes less than five minutes. Question number four, could the results be wrong? Short answer, yes. It's hard to study this in big populations, but the question is like, if it shows that the fallopian tubes are open, how accurate is that? And if it shows that the fallopian tubes are blocked, how accurate is that? It's hard to study this on a big scale with lots and lots of patients, but there is one study that looked at 128 patients that had an HSG followed by a laparoscopy to see if the findings on the HSG were correct or not. And basically, if the HSG shows that the fallopian tubes are open, it's really right. 97, 98% of the time. And when the HSG says that one or both of the fallopian tubes are blocked, it's right most of the time, but sometimes it might not be right, especially when it says that the tubes are blocked really close to the uterine cavity. Let me show you. Proximal tubal obstruction is when the you put fluid into the uterine cavity and it doesn't even fill into the fallopian tube. And so if it shows that both of the tubes are blocked or one of the tubes is blocked right here, sometimes that can be wrong. Sometimes we think about uterine spasm or tubal spasms where the muscles kind of contract down and it might just not allow the fluid to go through. But also if the fallopian tubes are blocked out here, distal occlusion or distal blockage, that's much more accurate because you don't typically get that kind of cramping or spasm out here. But the findings are pretty accurate. So in only three cases in that study of 128 patients, did it show that the tubes were blocked, but then when they looked on the laparoscopy, they were actually really open. Not all test results are 100% accurate. So if you find that your fallopian tubes are blocked, talk to your doctor about your personal situation and the steps that you can take to figure out if this is truly the case or not. Question number five, does an HSG hurt? This is the number one question. And listen, everybody is different. Yes, sometimes it can hurt as the fluid is going through the fallopian tubes. Those tubes are tiny and they're not used to having fluid kind of rush through them. And so very often people will talk about cramping as the fluid is kind of going through. Other people that do have blocked fallopian tubes will often have a lot more discomfort than people who have open fallopian tubes because oftentimes the doctor, the person who's doing the test really wants to make sure it's accurate. So they're trying to build up pressure to sort of really see if that tube is blocked or not. But you've got to talk to the person that is doing the test, communicate. And most of the time people do well with ibuprofen beforehand. That's like Motrin or Advil. Talk to your doctor about any sort of options that might be available for you for pain control if you're nervous about it. But I would say the vast majority of people say, okay, there was cramping, it was pretty quick, and it was over, and they're good the rest of the day. So I hope, if you're thinking about doing an HSG, I hope that is your experience. But again, talk to your doctor about what is available and what is right for you. I hope you learned something today. Make sure you check out my other videos on HSG and fertility testing. If you're at that point in your journey, you want to really understand what tests we're doing. Like this video if you learned something. Comment with questions that you have. Be sure and subscribe to this channel so you get my weekly videos. And as always, wishing you love, luck, and pineapples.